So today you'll be joining me for something a little different from the usual fishing, woodworking or outdoor activity. Today I'll be showing you how I tie my flies for fly fishing. So I am by no means rich and definitely do not have the money to splash out on new gear, whether that be fishing gear or anything for that matter. This is why you'll often find me using old second hand tools and usually trying to make something the budget way instead of just buying it from a store. For example that shed that I built, my gym bench and even the setup that I'm using here with an old vice and pliers. So please don't judge me for the equipment I have or the techniques I use for doing things as I'll do what works for me. But anyway, for those of you who frequently support the channel by watching and liking each and every video that I post, you probably won't find this very interesting. But what I'm doing is making small fish hooks that look like flies for when I go fly fishing. One of the reasons why I'm doing this is because a store bought fly hook can cost anywhere from $1 to $5 per hook and in an average day fishing I'll lose or break about 5 hooks on snags or fish. So it pretty much comes down to me not having the money to be buying hooks all the time and I thought the concept of making my own hooks seemed pretty cool. And for those of you that don't normally watch my videos and are only here for the fly tying, please consider subscribing and checking out some of my other videos such as my most recent fly fishing ones. But anyway, on to the fly. So I've only just started fly tying recently and I'm not the best, but one professionally made fly that has caught me a lot of fish is this little fella. I'm not sure of the name, but I thought I'd have a go at tying it. So I had a go at making these three, and now I'm going to make a fourth. So I don't have any tungsten beads which would normally be used on a fly like this and they sit up by the eye and weigh the fly down a little bit. I like to use this ready pinky thread as most of it gets covered but the little bit that is visible has quite a nice contrast with the peacock feather. After a few wraps I cut the excess thread off and carried on wrapping it around the hook to build up a bit of a body and hide the shiny hook part. I then used my pliers to hold the thread down so it wouldn't come undone while I got a couple of fibres from a black feather that would act as the tail. Once I'd finished tying the peacock feather strand on, I pulled the thread out to the side and held it tight while I wrapped the peacock strand around to create the effect of a little green fairy bodied fly. I then got the thread and tied that around tight to make sure it wouldn't come off. I then selected a feather that would resemble the wings and I removed a few fibres from it.
As I was tying the wings on, I noticed that my body of the fly wasn't as fat as I would have liked it to be. But in order to widen out the body, I would just do a few more loops over with the thread at the start to build up that base. I then repeated the process for the second wing, but angled it slightly outward to try and create these two separate wings. The fly was basically complete, but because I didn't have a bead at the start and the thread is red, it doesn't really look like an eye of an insect, so in order to create that effect I just simply coloured it with a black sharpie. I then cut the excess thread and added a bit of clear nail polish onto the end to give it a bit of shine and to harden the thread. This also helps make the eye look more realistic. Please remember to like, subscribe and share the video. Thanks for watching.